Here with us in our second segment is Jonathan Church, who's the administrator of the Worcester Regional Transit Authority, also known as the WRTA. Welcome, Jonathan. Thank you, Tim. Jonathan, you know, people see the buses, but maybe they don't know how and why they're there. Uh, you know, maybe for our viewers, you could give a little overview of the Worcester Regional Trans Transit Authority, uh, how long it's been in existence, and sure. kind of what it does. We've been in existence since 1974, so this is our 43rd year of operations. Uh, we took over for the as a public entity from the former Worcester Bus Company that was a private operation. And we've been providing public transportation in uh, a 37 community area, with Worcester being the, the largest city. Uh, we're basically covering the uh, bottom half of southern Worcester County uh, for our service area. And so when people look at the state, uh, there's a, a series of regional transit authorities. Yes. Uh, how many? There's 15 total. 15. We're the second largest. Second largest. And uh, that regional transit authority uh, receives funding in a from the federal government, from the state government, from, from, from fares. From local uh, and local, local assessments as assessment, well, that's right. as, well yeah. as fares. Uh, so we have uh, four funding sources that have come in and, and over the years uh, we've been able to increase service and, and build new things. We've certainly built a new hub at Union Station, which has been, uh, we find to be very successful, right. uh, particularly with transfers and development within uh, as part of the city square development. Uh, and certainly we've built a new uh, maintenance facility, which was a big boon for us as we were working out of an older facility that was built in the late 1920s, originally as a trolley barn. Yeah, Congressman McGovern able to secure a pretty significant yes, uh, earmark uh, at the federal level, or grant, uh, and then uh, was able to work with him at the state level and, and uh, Governor Patrick and uh, the Baker Polito administration subsequently to help fund that. And, you know, I, I just want to hear from you, but I, I just would reinforce and why transportation is so important. Uh, when I talk to our chamber member businesses, when we talk about the issues that matter, mm -hmm. uh, consistently in that top four or five issues is transportation and convenience for their employees, their movement of people and goods, uh, none more important than people. And when, when you come down to it, that's what you do every day. It's, right. you know. Transit is a people business. It's not just moving vehicles on the street. It's moving people to where they need to get to go and, and part of their lives. Um, certainly to work, to health care, to shopping. Uh, we're there to provide car-free transportation within the city, and we've been doing so for 43 years. You know, we see, uh, you know, over a billion dollars of development, a couple billion dollar development around the city. Almost in every instance, they're in and around transportation routes. Um, downtown in particular with mm -hmm. Union Station and the buses, a true intermodal hub. That is driven. We look in Boston and where the Seaport District in South Boston, mm -hmm. right next to South Station. Yep. So transportation drives economic development? It really does. Um, and it's, you know, now that we're part of the intermodal hub at Union Station, we certainly see a boon. Uh, with the easier connections to not only the MBTA commuter rail and uh, Amtrak and Peter Pan and Greyhound bus, but we're really starting to see a trend where a lot of younger people are moving back into cities and really wanting to live car-free lives. Uh, we're also seeing, you know, down the road where transportation and infrastructure will be changing. I mean, we're certainly reading the news about autonomous vehicles coming into the future, um, ride sharing and, and things like Uber and Lyft coming into the play. So it's going to be uh, interesting and we're, we're looking forward to see what uh, the federal government is going to be putting out in terms of an infrastructure plan, um, hopefully sooner than later. Well, you also talked about that, you know, you mentioned drivers and it's in the news. <laughs> uh, you, know, uh, um, you know, your number of employees and, and trained professionals in the transportation industry. Yes, we have 120 trained professional drivers. Uh, we have about 30 maintenance people. Uh, and then we have on the administrative side, um, with between our direct management and our management company that we contract operations with, uh, we have another uh, about 20. So we have roughly a 175-person operation, plus in addition we contract with local communities for their councils on aging right. and some of their services, as well as a private nonprofit that also provides service in the western part of our region, which is more rural. Right, right. Uh, and we talked about the different funding sources. Uh, some of the, the local contributions, assessments from, from municipalities, some yes. of the state dollars, the federal dollars. But, you know, with what's happening in Washington and unfortunately over the uh, last uh, 10, 15, 20 years, you know, there used to always be a bipartisan agreement that transportation was a good <coughs> investment because it drives economic development Absolutely. and job creation. That has slowly atrophied, and that's impacted you uh, and, and your ability to d deliver. It has, and you know we certainly are looking right now at some potential service cuts, possibly a fare increase, uh, which is out for public review right now. But we certainly know that you know transportation is a big driver, and we've been trying to make our case uh, both at the federal and state levels and local levels to say you know we are a part of it and 
And that's not a challenge uh, that the WIT has alone. It's the transit no, authorities, including the MBTA the, the as MBTA, well. The MBTA, the transit authorities, and Mass DOT on the highway side as well. Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, th these are challenging times, but, uh, <laughs> you know, uh, we're hoping that uh, there will be some return to infrastructure and transportation investment in Washington. And certainly that's the one area that the president uh, has, had indicated that he wanted to do something big around transportation. Yes. And I, I think... Uh, People on both sides of the aisle would welcome that uh, because we've seen what it can do. I mean, one of the reasons we see City Square, you see um, the energy in the Canal District and in uh, Shrewsbury Street continuing to, to, to grow and thrive is that orientation around transportation Absolutely. options. Absolutely. Uh, environmental benefits that's often overlooked. Uh, Yes. You want to talk about in sure. terms of some we, of the things uh, you've done with the buses and we the efficiency? Have. We've done uh, a number of things over the years. Where we've, our oldest bus is a 2008 bus, so we have a very modern fleet. The average age of our fleet is only five years. Our FTA requires a minimum of six. Uh, so we're ahead of the game. We also operate uh, diesel electric hybrid buses as well as uh, full uh, electric buses that we have uh, on certain routes uh, within the city. So. We are trying to reduce the carbon footprint within the city by trying to be more environmental in terms of our use of fuel as well as our use of uh, air quality. Yeah, well, someone uh, over the years taken the buses or driven behind them, I mean, it's been a dramatic difference. And if I remember correctly, a lot of those, uh, that new uh, uh, rolling stock, if mm -hmm. you will, uh, some of that came through the uh, uh, Stimulus package, uh, President Obama. Some of it did, uh, yes. And, and, and the Congress passed uh, through some of the transportation bond bills at the state level. Mm -hmm. um, We've also applied for additional grants through the federal government, for particularly for the electric buses that had a special uh, low impact, no impact emissions, uh, which we were able to secure some funding for that as well. And you know, and as the density grows in in city and in, in, in the city of Worcester and all of Central Massachusetts, um, you know, we're finding as we talk about economic development and, and you know. Uh, growing that density, one of the challenges is parking spaces. And the, you know, people say we need more parking. Well, parking garages aren't cheap. Right. Uh, Forty thousand uh, dollars minimum minimum per spot to build a garage. Right. And so one of the ways that we can kind of avoid having to make some of those investments is encouraging individuals and employers and others to to educate about the benefits of of public transportation and you have some programs where you can kind of work with or ways to engage with the employers we do we uh, we look forward to meeting with employers directly to talk about the benefits that we provide and, and look at developing past type programs we have a travel training program for people who may uh, not be familiar with public transportation and may need to have a little bit of assistance in figuring it out um, we certainly are, are looking forward to working with much more of the business community in Worcester as it changes and certainly for those that are established here in the healthcare community and, and other drivers. In addition to the modernization of the fleet, uh, new buildings, um, you've also, you mentioned change, uh, when we're, with, we're all faced with change. Um, technology, yes. and there's been some, some, some substantial upgrades. Uh, we have, we've invested in uh, a lot of uh, automatic passenger counting, automatic vehicle locators. We have a bus tracker that uh, customers can use to track with their phone as well as uh, through the internet on their laptop or desktop. Uh, we have the ability at each stop to find out when the next bus will be there. Um, and we're looking at new improved fare technology uh, in addition to the Charlie card that we're compatible with with the MBTA, um, possibly in the future looking at uh, phone technology. And that technology allows communications with users, handheld devices Absolutely. And, and, you know, going on. We're seeing that most of our users are now using mobile technology as their primary means to, to access information, both for transit authority, but also in moving toward uh, credit payments, credit card payments and fares. And you mentioned, um, the, you know, the Charlie card, I mean, in, in, in that integration of, of systems. Mm -hmm. So, you know, if you're WRTA, can integrate with the commuter rail and, uh, and others? Uh, unfortunately, it can't integrate, integrate with the commuter rail at this time, but it can interact with uh, any of the systems within the city of Boston or the other okay. RTAs within. So that would uh, be the, the and, uh, so that would be the, the buses and the tr and the trolleys. And the trolleys, but not the commuter but rail. But not the okay. commuter rail. Good, good yeah. clarification. But um, is there conversations around that with the? MBA? We have had uh, conversations with Keolis uh, about that to say, you know, here we are with this technology, and uh, the MBTA is looking at a new uh, fare technology as well. Um, so they'll. That we're looking to hope to be more integrated with the commuter rail system as mm -hmm. part of that. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, we, we talked about uh, some of the, the employee uh, training. Uh, uh, 
that, that's pretty regular. And then there are competitions I know that the WRTA employees are part of in terms of some of the driving or rodeo. We have a rodeo, yes, uh, which we do every year where we have uh, a nice little test with each of the drivers to, to see who has the, uh, the best skills, I guess to say, uh, which we set up an obstacle course for and, and uh, we then present them with prize for, for best driver. But our, our drivers are very good. All, most of them are um, at least five, seven years on the job. Mm -hmm. And in addition to the kind of some of the technology and change, um, you know, with some of the new fleets, you know, people, how, if, uh, you know, they get from place to be. We're, we want to encourage people, the bus, if they need to take the, the train, mm -hmm. uh, the bikes. Uh, we've been part of a little working group uh, on, yes. on bikes. Uh, and, and people have the ability to, you know, take a route. If they want to go that last mile, they can take from a route to a bike. You can do that, too. We can, and we have a number of bike racks at our facility in Union Station. Um, and as I said, Tim, you know, certainly we're looking at transportation as a changing option. Driving is um, certainly there for a lot of people, but it's not the only option anymore. Right. And Jonathan, we, we just have a couple minutes. If, if in addition to the website, if people are looking to, you know, if there's an employer out there that says, look, I'd love to have someone come in and talk to my employees, or I'd like to, to learn more, how can they l learn more, contact you or members of your team? Sure. They can visit our website at www.therta.com. TheRTA.com. Or they can contact me at 508-453-3403. Great. Well, Jonathan Church, the administrator uh, of the WRTA, and how long now has it been? Uh, just over a year. Just over a year, <laughs> and we recently had the opportunity to salute you in the new yes, building at our you. Chamber Breakfast Club. We're glad you could be a part of it with your team.